because I don't have to do it very often. All right, I'd like to call the meeting to order at 6.32 p.m. Does anybody want to make a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Seconded. It's been moved and seconded. Um, can somebody make a motion to approve the minutes from the February 6, 2023 meeting? I'll make a motion. I'll second. A motion has been made and seconded. And let's look at our park financial information. Real, right? real quick, these I got to vote after the second. After they get a second. Oh, sorry. Have a vote on it. Can we take a vote, please? <laughs> All in favor. Aye. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. No All right. Next on the agenda, number three is to, our number four is the park financial information. First two pages, or the first page is the, uh, the two capital funds. Um, nothing has changed on those from our last meeting. We'll go over those in detail a lot more when we get into the capital improvement planning. So the second page is our operational budget. Um, we're on pace there. The one maybe kind of bigger number, uh, line item 223, that was uh, some fencing products for field five, um, temporary baseball fences and softball fences for uh, our tournaments this summer. We've got a lot of teams that request those, so we picked up another set to put on Field 5. So, and Field 5 is the one right next to the building correct. here, right? For yeah. those that don't know, mm. it's a little kid field. So it'll be having those for the first, for the four flex over there. Um, they get used just about every tournament, and this would allow them to have another field with a fence then too. So we have pretty good parking over here on the weekends as well, so it kind of spreads people out a little bit. Other than that, is there any questions on the uh, operations budget? I see we do have some overtime, but I assume that's um, plowing probably? Correct, yes. And actually most of our uh, overtime until this last week, most of our snow events have been during the week. We haven't had hardly any overtime, even though we've had double the amount of snow events. I know, it's in my yard, so. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> A great big hill. Well, like, oh. For some reason, they've been on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It kind of seems like this year. But this last weekend we plowed this. We'll do some more overtime on the next round of this, and hopefully we're getting close to the end of that. Well, let's hope. Well, according to the weather people, we should be in the 40s right now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know what happened there. No. All right. Do we need to make a motion then to accept our park financial information? Sure, you can make a motion. Make a motion to accept the park financial information. To make the motion, I'll make the motion. I'll second. Great. Any discussion? Nope. Then let's take a vote. All in favor? All in favor. Say aye. 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 Motion passed. Motion passed. Thank you. <laughs> I told you I was going to write a script. It's okay. I'll keep All on. right. Helping you. You should see how I run my meetings. They're way different. <laughs> um, number five, let's uh, talk about the park dedication fees. And then um, I noticed that we didn't have the, um, I know Bill wanted to talk about the um, ordinance. Which one? This uh, dedication fee part, but he's not here to oh. talk about it. Yeah. Um I'll go through the read. Up, the, I'll do the read up real quick, and then for the record, and then we'll uh, we get into it. Okay. The current, the current park dedication fees were established by ordinance revision that was approved on August fifth, twenty fifteen. Article seven, section sixty six dash one nine five of the city code was amended to include the reduction of the not to exceed fee for residential park dedication from six thousand to two thousand per lot, exempting one habitable homestead per subdivision if applicable, and reducing the park dedication for commercial industrial developments from a not to exceed fee of 4,500 to $2,000 per acre. Within the current ordinance, the city can either elect to require dedication of up to 10% of new residential developments for parkland or receive funds equal to 10% of the market value of the property prior to development, not to exceed $2,000 per lot. For commercial or industrial developments, this is lowered to 5% with a not to exceed value of $2,000 per acre. The lower fees were adopted to compensate for higher water and sewer costs for the city's small customer base standalone utility system. Lower park dedication fees were put in place to maintain the competitive balance required to offset lower sack and whack charges of the market area municipalities. The need to update these fees to meet the demands for park improvements and new facilities was discussed at the 
December 13th, 2022 Park Commission meeting and the Joint City Council Work Meeting and Park Commission meeting on February 6, 2023. Based on discussions from both of those meetings, it appears there was a consensus to move to set a fee for lots and units rather than a percentage based off the appraised value of the land in cases where cash in lieu of land was recommended. Also based on those, on, uh, those discussions, different fees may be needed for new single family home developments compared to multifamily home developments. There is current legal action ongoing that is challenging the requirement for park dedication fees for commercial and industrial projects. Staff has been advised that a ruling on this case could occur this year and recommend holding off on any changes until that time. <coughs> Staff is seeking a recommendation from the Park Commission to City Council on any changes to the current park dedication system and also what fees should be associated with any recommended changes. Pulling from past discussion and as a starting point for discussing which fees are appropriate, staff are recommending a $2,000 park dedication fee for new lots and single family home developments and a $1,500 per unit fee for new developments with multifamily homes. Adding a 25% discount for multifamily developments with public recreation facilities may also keep East Bethel competitive with other communities while still increasing recreational opportunities. The fees would be included in the annual city fees schedule and could be reviewed annually and adjusted as deemed appropriate to balance demands for park facilities and improvements with market, market conditions for development projects. So attachment two, or attachment one is the one you guys have seen a couple times now. This is the the uh, breakdown of some of our neighboring communities um, from the discussions and correct me if I'm wrong if anybody wants to see any changes it kind of sounded like going to a fee based was a good idea from both the Park Commission and the City Council to make to simplify the process would make it easier for you guys to know what the amount is when you make a recommendation to City Council it'd be easier for City Council to accept the uh, fee in lieu of cash or recommend land when they get it before them to before the whole process starts, the developers would know what they're going to be dealing with too. Yeah, I think it took a, mm -hmm. a little bit of the mystery away from for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It seems to be what yeah. just about everybody has done. Yeah, kind of puts you right in line with everybody else and the process they use, I guess. So, how do we move forward with that? Well, we're looking for a recommendation from the Park Hello. Commission back to the City Council and it'll, it'll go back to them for review. Um, if you want to do a fee based and then the amount, we threw 2000 and 1500 out there as a starting point. Right. And that can be whatever you guys want to adjust it or up or down or. What did we land on with, um, oh, I forget his first name, Davis. Um, Jack. Yeah, with Jack. He had a recommendation based on what he knows. <coughs> Well, he was, was making his personal recommendation, not... We had decided on a different number. We had decided, I think, on 2,000, didn't right. we? Right. Yeah. And yeah. it said 1,500. I think at the... Uh, I have to go back in the minutes and check. Yeah, yeah it was looking I think at it was 2,500 was the recommendation at the December meeting. And Bill had made a good point that it should be the same for both. Um, so that's kind of what we went to the work meeting, work com uh, meeting with the city council. Jack at that time was thinking maybe 1500 for both. But um, I think we're underselling ourselves if we go 1500. And Jack and I have talked, that's why we kind of, we're both kind of thinking 2000 would put us in line with, oh, sorry. basically what we're charging right now, it wouldn't change really the, the cost of the developer. Most of the developments are right around that $2,000 amount right now anyways. And then a little bit lower amount for, for the multifamily just because of the, the high cost that it's gonna entail. Mm -hmm. and that our SAC and WAC charges are a little bit higher. We want to keep that competitive. But you could easily make a case that it should be the same for both because whether you live in a single-family home or a multi-family home, your use of the park is basically the right. same. Right. right. <clears throat> it's just more people will be using the park if it's multi-family. And then what about the um, commercial industrial? That was kind of open-ended because of this court case. Correct. I think we just leave that. We're recommending just leaving that alone for right now or if you want to just throw a number to make it even with the other one so it's not a percentage based but it's it's that's at the courts right now that might go away completely that commercial industrial component 
But you, yeah, you could make a recommendation if you want yeah. to just to simplify it at this time. If we're making the change to everything else, it would probably make sense to just make that change Put to even though it may go away. You know, yeah. it, it's it would be one easy process across the board then. Yep. So do we have a number we want to land on? Well, it looks pretty varied if you look at the the column over here on the right. Yep. It's all over the place. Mm -hmm. And we just do a percentage of the land value, so. That's currently. Yeah, but is there, as a group tonight, is there a, a number we want to land on for the fee um, to recommend to the city? Or keep the same as it is now, right? Right. You could keep it as a percentage. And we're going to be looking That's at this yearly from now on? Is that? The amount could be reviewed annually when we do the fee schedule. Do we really want to keep it, though, as it is? I think a fee we would probably come out better, especially with the, the multi-family units, don't you think? As or opposed to a percentage, is what you're saying. Right, right, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. right yeah. now it's a percentage. Right. right. Well, that's why we're discussing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I thought we had landed on that before, but maybe we I don't know if we did on the commercial. I don't have my notes. Oh, I guess I'm talking, not the commercial, I was talking more of the uh, non-commercial. The multifamily. Multifamily. Oh, Denise, you're talking about the commercial portion? Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yep. Yeah, that really hasn't been discussed, though. Yeah, whatever you guys want to recommend on that portion. Right. So you were thinking keep that at the percentage until the court case is settled because we don't know what's going to happen. Right. But I don't know how does how do you guys feel about the commercial part of it? Well, it's hard to compare to to what other people are doing because some go by per acre, some go per lot. So it's kind of like maybe we should just leave it what like it is for now, and then when we have to change it, we can have another discussion. That might be. We haven't. Yeah, my, I haven't really looked too too much into the commercial side. It's Do I suppose we don't know what the court schedule is because it's all up in the air based yeah. on when the judge is available, right? I, I looked at a lot of other cities around the country just to see the legal justification for all this, and it's common across most of the United States. Uh, one example, like Austin, Texas, was five thousand dollars per for a single family home and thirty five hundred for a uh, apartment, each unit in an apartment complex. So it's pretty, it's a common practice. It's been legally vetted throughout the U.S., it sounds like. So they did not have a commercial uh, industrial component on a lot of them, though, either, so. That's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Should we just um, try to come up with something right now at this moment for, just focus on the, the single family for, and multifamily? Um, you know, I think if we went 2,000 and 1,500, 2,000 for the single family, 1,500 uh, for the uh, multifamily. I think we're right in the ballpark. Right, there. Mm -hmm. right. And I think that might align with where Jack was at during his discussion as well. So do we want to, do we need to make a motion for this? Yeah, we'd make a motion yeah. and then a vote. Okay. Are we going to vote on that or are we going to talk about the part, the dedication ordinance too? Are, is this all one package, or do we want to do it by piece part? I'm not sure what you, what you see. Well, because we have the the ordinance that we were going to look at. Were we going to make changes to that? Do you remember? That'll be changed with with this with this amount, change on this amount. See, and I think Bill wanted to look at it. Bill was he talking. Said, he wanted to look at the um, a different a different part. He wanted to look at this where they have to make the trail for each development and stuff. We'll have to look at that at a different time. Okay, well that's that, what that's, I was questioning. That's different from this, yeah. Okay. All right. So we can do that when Bill is here and Right, I think we need to, I actually have a couple questions about that. We probably need to bring the planning anyway. commission in on that part too. Okay. Because that'll affect development. All right, does anybody have anything they want to say about the commercial portion? Do we just want to leave it at the 5% or? So is there, um, we the city has to do an appraisal right now that's right. how it works yep. so there's there's a fee is that a very significant fee for an appraisal it depends on what the that city council um i think in the past they've sometimes used the tax valuation okay. if both parties agree that that's okay then they don't have to do an appraisal 
Um, if there's a disagreement, then an appraisal has to be ordered, and yes, there is a fee to do the okay. appraisal. So that would be eating into whatever dedication fees you get yes. from that developer. Yep. <clears throat> I personally would like to see a fee. Yeah, I, I think if... For the commercial? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as we're changing the other two, why not go across the board and change them all, and that would eliminate that possibility of a, an appraisal fee eating into that. On those com commercial businesses that have already been done, Nate, do they have a minimum amount of acreage that they have to have, or is it just whatever lot they buy? Whatever is zoned for in use for commercial or industrial purposes, yep. So it could lot. actually be like a half acre, or if they're yeah, in the Yeah, I don't know district. if we have any that small. But, but you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. there's the one little lot that's outside the movie theater. That's yeah, there's the acre lots, definitely, yep. So you can either do it by acre or per lot. That would be up to the commission to recommend. Okay. And what do you guys think? If we went that route, what, what amount are you thinking? Anybody? Well, let's see. So, and Nate, you said you hadn't looked at where those, because you've looked at some of these other, the um, residential stuff is kind of about in the same range we're talking about per lot, right? In and our area, yeah. Across the country, it varies. Well, even just like Andover and Blaine are significantly right. higher. When you get closer mm -hmm. to the Minneapolis, the Minneapolis one is significantly but we're, higher. What we're currently collecting is right in that oh, range correct, that you're yeah. talking about for chain, for yes, uh, yep. your suggestion. We have, I think. But you haven't looked at that for the commercial stuff? Or um, not based on a per acre value, no. Oh, okay. Well, it looks like Isanti is at 1,500 per acre. Right, and Cambridge is at almost 3,000. Columbus is different because, uh, is it different just because they're a township or because they're smaller? It's they're per lot. Theirs is per lot. Yeah. Right, but if you have a two acre lot. Okay. I mean, isn't Columbus is a city now? Yeah, Columbus is a, a city now, officially now. They're, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of variation on that commercial side. Mm -hmm. Right, which is probably why we landed on the 5% in the first place. And if the court case goes through, those would all be zero. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, it looks like if we went about 2,000, wouldn't we kind of be in the middle of it? Per lot or per acre? Well, because they, they have, um, let's see here. Like Forest Lake has 2,500 base plus 2,500 per acre. So you're always going to have 2,500 coming in. Mm-hmm. Cambridge is at almost 3,000 an acre. Blaine at 4,000. Well, we can just almost three thousand. We can throw out Blaine and Andover because they're and Coon Rapids, uh, Coon Rapids because they're different population yeah. and different sure. business structure. Mm -hmm. yep. I'd say at least two, because then we'd be yeah we'd be more in in touch with Forest Lake, Asante, Cambridge. Well, we're not as big as Cambridge. That's the biggest. They have more commercial and yeah. uh, centralized stuff. Bonnie, are you looking at lot or acre? Lot. So 2,000, so if it's a two acre lot, you're saying 2,000, or even if it's a one acre lot, 2,000? Or a five acre lot, 2,000? Or a 40 acre lot parcel? At right, we would get 2,000. No. No, I think oh, we want to go I think per, be per acre. acre would be the yeah. Per acre. Yeah. yeah. Good point. <clears throat> well, are we landing on something? It sounds like it. Sounding like 2,000 per acre. Per acre for commercial. And then we had 2,000 for per single. Per, per single family. And that's 2,000 per... Lot, is that right? 
per single family. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. And then multifamily was 1500 or adding a 25% discount for multifamily developments that have their own public react route. Oh, that's right. So that's okay, what okay. ISANI does. They, you get a 25% reduction if you have a public, if they but have. it has to be open to the public. Right. It Which can't be we've a, had some developments oh. that have looked at that before putting in, and then they back out. So, so. it can't be their own private club or whatever. Correct. It's it would be open, open to everybody. the all city residents, yes. Sure. Yeah. Point where we can make I a motion. Know. I think to me those look like they're pretty good numbers. Yeah. Everybody I'll make a motion on uh, two thousand for the residential. Two single thousand. family. Yep. Mm -hmm. Two thousand for the multifamily. No. Or the twenty-five. Yeah. Fifteen hundred. Oh, no, it's two, it was two thousand or the twenty-five percent. I thought we said. 2000 for a single family, 1500 for a multifamily, unless they have a public recreation facility, then they get the 25% discount. Oh, okay. I thought we wanted it at 2000 That was for the commercial. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then um, 2000 for the per acre. Commercial. Commercial. Okay, just want to re I mean, reread re re this so maybe I got it right. The motion was for to change to a single fee for single family residential of two thousand dollars per per lot. For multifamily, it would be fifteen hundred dollars per unit with a twenty. Basically, like saying it's twenty five percent reduction with public recreation facilities, and the commercial would be changed to a single fee of two thousand dollars per acre. Is that correct? That's what mm -hmm. I got. Well, Sue made the motion, and Sidney, I'll second it. I'm taking over your meeting. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> I'll shut up. A motion has been made and seconded. Could we take a? Would we? Oh, actually favor. take all in favor. I'm sorry. I don't know why that's so hard for me. I just make the answers. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any discussion? We're all in? All We're in. all in, Nate. We're all in. Okay, we'll get that to the city motion council, passed. I think, at their next meeting. Okay, motion passed. And then um, do we need to set up the ordinance for next time, maybe? Yeah, I'll get that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll email Bill and just to clarify what he, for sure what he wanted to see on there. And I just hate to think we took a vote and there was something that started out to I have. think he was, was talking about the, in our city code, it says that all new developments have to have a trail on both sides of the road. And they haven't enforced that since the 2008 crash in the market, just to try and keep development. And so that needs to be revisited and updated in the code, either enforce it or change the code, basically. Hmm. Well, it looks like we looked at it in 2015. Yeah, it's been talked about a couple times, but they, we never had any official change made to it. Okay. All right, so we can table that discussion till next time. And next on the agenda, city council reports. Well, we got to do the. Oh, sorry. Item six. Oh, did, I thought that's what we were talking about. No, we weren't. Number six, we need to talk about 2024 2028 park capital improvement planning. Begin discussion on the and development of the five year capital improvement plan. The Park Commission prepares a capital improvement plan annually, which updates projected projects, evaluates priorities, and establishes funding for these works for the coming year and for each of the subsequent years for a five-year period. The plan is presented to City Council for their approval and used for preparing the coming year's budget. Attaches the current one we're using, the 2023 to 2027 Parks Capital Improvement Plan. We will discuss those projects that are listed for 2024 and determine if future projects need to stay in their current funding year or be rearranged to reflect any changes in our park priorities. Other projects can be added and, and existing ones can be deleted if there's a need for restructuring the schedule. Recommendations from this discussion will be used to develop a draft 2024 to 2028 Parks Capital Improvement Plan that the Park Commission can review and edit at a following meeting. So the one that's attached as attachment one is our one that was passed last year. 
Um, the first page is the Park Acquisition and Development Fund. So that showed a beginning balance of 38656 The actual amount that we have starting this year, a lot of the, this one's hard, really hard to predict, so it's just based on kind of wild guesses of what we think is going to happen with developments. We, we just kind of put a dollar amount in there to try and plan. Um, we had less money come in from the uh, Cambia Hills park dedication fee. That was negotiated down. And then we still, uh, we still have an outstanding development. So right now we're starting that balance off with $8,602, which is shown on your other uh, budget page. So that's about $30,000 lower than what was shown on this plan. I know that we have $20,000 still outstanding. So that'll bring it back up to 28,000, but that's not in that budget yet. So we'll kind of use that as a starting point for this, for uh, beginning of 2023. We had the Booster West ball field lights planned for this year. Uh, that, that, those amounts were kind of based on trying to plan a set of used lights. We're having a hard time finding that. I did get a quote for new ball field lights. Um, for This is for the baseball field out there. And it was, all the prices are for everything is going skyrocketing through the roof. Um, they, they quoted us around $300,000. So I think that that project's going to be shelved for a while until we either can find a set of used lights or figure out another way to fund it. So are those new? Are, are there lights there now? And There's no lights there it's now. A brand, oh, okay. It's a brand new field that okay. we... Yeah, the baseball field was built uh, maybe <coughs> two, three years ago. It was completed. And a lot of the teams that use it need to extend it uh, into the evening more so they can't, they can't get a full game in. Mm -hmm. And then the town ball team wants to use that as their home field too, but they can't without lights. So that was kind of where that, hopefully find some used lights, but we haven't had any luck with that yet. So I'll keep working on that, but. Um, Is there some kind of temporary solution we can come up with in the meantime so they can play? Not that I'm aware Cause I know of. like the fire department has those portable lights. It would take quite yeah. a few, I think, to make it play. Oh, okay. Bring the cars out there and turn the headlights on. Yeah. Feel the dreams. That's how we <laughs> used to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just curious because, you know, we have the outdoor skating rink and we had temporary lights there for a long time. Yeah, too. and those are the ones that are on there. That's a little bit smaller area to illuminate. Baseball field would be, would be pretty tough. Yeah. And then the new ones are LED. They, you know, they were, they kind of sell top of the line when they quoted us, but. That's kind of what we're looking at for that price. Um, for 2024, we had a, sh a shade structure for Booster West. Um, Which we need because the trees are all gone now. That, uh, I think that would be a good item to put on there if the Park Commission still thinks so. When they have tournaments out there, there's hundreds of people out there and they're all looking for a place out of the sun, so. Yeah, we got rid of all the big shade trees, so there's it's like a desert. When you're out there are we going to move that to 2023 then or and and just not do anything about the lights for now or just keep it in there like that well even with this year we probably wouldn't have enough to fund it for this for this year depending on what kind of development takes place um, we got the elevage property um, the park dedication fees for that are not going to be too significant i think it was around forty thousand dollars but we're still working on the appraisal for that and whether or not the existing trails will count against that. So it might not come back with anything out of that project. There's a couple more housing developments that are, that are being talked about, but there, there's no huge uh, fees that come in that I'm aware of. When they redo the speedway, will we get anything out of that? No, oh. it's only for new development. Oh, okay. Tearing, they're starting to tear that down on Thursday. They already took the roof off, I think, when I was driving past. Oh, did they? Looks like they already started. We have to turn the water off on Thursday, so hopefully they'll hit the water line. Well, I know the <laughs> sign is down for sure. I know we don't have this on there, but I was thinking if we're going to spend all our time re redoing Booster Park to make it a premier park because we have so many people coming in, I really want to look at the concession building too. Upgrading that? Well, upgrading it or at least painting it and redoing the doors and checking it was, on it. It was all repainted last year. Last spring we repainted the whole thing and redid all the bath, repainted in the bathrooms and fixed the doors that were broken. So it's in a lot better shape. What about on the inside? Is it still? 
in, in the bathrooms. Well, inside the concession stand itself, there were. We had to go in and do a lot of cleaning in there. SBAA had had that as their kind of their storage area. We threw a lot of stuff out and did a deep cleaning on it. It's it's. Uh, so the refrigerators and everything are good. Uh, the cooler, the the one cooler is the is not working that they had. It used to go from the ice unit to there. That one burnt out last year. So we would have to replace that. We're just working on who's responsible for that. If it's if it's ours or if it's owned by, we don't, we're not sure yet. <laughs> That might be a couple thousand dollars or so for that. It just seems like a shame to put all this work into booster and then the concession stand looks like it was built in the 60s like it was. I don't think it's been upgraded. I don't think it was built in the 60s, though. Oh. Or 70s, maybe. It's pretty old. So I got the concession stand. Any other projects that anybody would like to see added? And these can go on pretty much either either one of these budgets are. Uh, well, let's let's go through this real quick, and then we'll go through the other one, and then we can see if we want to make any changes. Um, going forward, all we had was playground equipment on here, and then a park pavilion. Nothing specific. These are like like I said, based on uh, what we get for development park dedication fees. The second page is the transfer from the general fund of $100,000. Um, we're not m recommending any changes to that We're at this time unless the Park Commission wants to recommend that. For this year, we have um, Whispering Oaks, a, just one piece of playground equipment needs to be replaced in there and then have the tennis courts resurfaced. We had the skateboard park equipment at Booster West. We've been pushing this along for a long time. Yeah, we have. We should probably look at upgrading that because mm -hmm. it's looking pretty bad. And then we had the Baton Street Trail segment. Uh, that's kind of a short stub that a lot of our, we're gonna try and do mostly with our public works staff yet. Oh, I should say too, this, this um, the beginning balance on this fund was, Uh, the beginning balance on here shows 94686 We've already had the, 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 the transfer from the general fund has already taken place. Um, we have an outstanding project from last year that we're finishing up with the paving of the trail at John Anderson that was around 70000 So that number um, at the first box, my calculation would put it right around $68,000. So as it sits today, we have 168000 that's unspoken for until we start these other projects for 2023. Each one of these will go to city council when they're approved to, to for this year. It's not listed on there? Paving John Anderson? It, that was actually on 2022. Oh, okay. But it, it was so late in the fall I that we uh, we wanted to wait till spring to do that. We have to take a big oak tree down in there yet. That hopefully in the next month we can get down. Most of it's ready to roll. There's just one piece where we have to cross uh, kind of a wetland area that we're still finishing up. We did all that in-house, so that was all done with our public works guys, so none of that was contracted out yet. So that 94,686, you're saying it dropped to about 68,000? About 68, okay. correct, yep. <laughs> what happened over there? Apparently Al's got mice in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Minions. So then in 2024, we have the Coon Lake Beach uh, playground equipment and the skateboard equipment down there as well, all kind of under one umbrella. Is that the, the skate park, is that the same stuff that we moved from over here, over there? It was uh, originally at, um, I want to say we're by Hidden Haven. Somewhere. Hidden Haven. Hidden Haven Park was taken over there and moved to the, to the Mayor Peterson Park down at Coon Lake Beach. It's kind of the same vintage as the stuff out here. Right, because they were put together at the same time, weren't they, originally? I, with the skateboard stuff, I, and maybe I'm getting older, but I don't see a lot of kids using that stuff as much as it was for a the while. The stuff over here gets used every day. Do you day. see a lot of people there? Oh, I can hear it. Okay. Do you guys so. see a lot of skateboard at the beach? I One of them, a couple of them have moved away, I think. Yeah. I, Hardly ever. I've hardly ever seen anybody use it. Yeah, when we drive by, we never but see it. Is there an alternative thing we could do? That's up if you guys want to. Like a sliding. 
Well, that's that's different kind of building <laughs> that has to be done. We could do a sliding hill cheap. We just have to don't have a little. We can spot do it for from it. Bonnie's yeah. house. You can go right into the lake area. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, is one is one or two lake isn't used? The skate park. Yeah. It has, it was being used, but there's, I mean, could that one be moved over here? That, well, that's one's, the same, that one's the same age. Oh, okay. We yeah. moved it from over here oh. over there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so the moving is done enough of that. Okay. And it's getting hard to find any replacement parts for it. It's pretty, it's really outdated. There's a lot of specialized bolts and pieces on there that we kind of had to implement. Well, and I think the one. skateboard equipment skate park equipment that they build now is a lot safer than what we had originally because some of the skate parks that I've been by, I'm like, wow, that looks really cool. They're, they're more yeah. permanent and they're not, you know, metal that eventually gets all rusty and crusty. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to take the skate park out at the beach, what would be better? A bigger park park or... Well, it's in a completely different area from yeah, it's the other kind of removed park. from the real. Is yeah. it close by? I it's guess by the ball population. field. By the ball field, which we know now the softball league is taking over, so right. more kid friendly because we're gonna have more softball games there. Would that? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's pretty, I, I pretty could be logic. a small, small playground. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. It'd be interesting to see how parking works out too once we really start using that. Yeah, it's the what? How big is that parking lot? Nate? Oh, off the top of my head, I, there's like thirty some spaces I want to say. Which, if they have a tournament, is not going to be enough. Uh, I don't, they're not. They're not going to have any tournaments there. It's only going to be uh, practice. Uh, no games during the week, so it'll be two teams worth of cars. Parking should be adequate. Parking should be adequate. There's there's a few spots along um, Laurel Drive too. There, the one bad part with any softball field when you have a parking lot close to it is foul balls going into the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's where the parking was for a long, long time when we were using it heavy. I've se I've seen a few balls in the past land on a vehicle. I've never saw one sma smash the windshield, but <laughs> there was a couple back in the day. I know it was an issue with like the Soderville baseball field on Crosstown, so a lot of people ended up parking out on the Crosstown Boulevard rather than. Oh, yeah. the, we have a friend who had a balls. sunroof, and the ball went right into his car as he was driving past. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. That could be a bad deal. He said it was quite the surprise for me to have this ball come in through my sunroof, but he goes, "I'm okay." Wow. That's and scary. it's not going to be adults. The ones that I did go back were. Guys well, this would be, are these teenage girls? Not a women's league, right? It's uh, U14 and U12, I believe. Girls fast pitch softball. Okay. For 2025, we have another chunk of the Baton Street Trail segment. That would get us down, that could possibly finish out the, that trail then. That would get us to 222nd. Um, for 2026, we had just a new park development with the uh, expectation that there was going to be something developed down in this area, down along uh, Viking, near the golf course, that area down in there. And then playground equipment replacement for somewhere down that in 2026. Well, we so. know we don't have a park over there, so we still have to look at it if we're, the city's going to continue to have development. Yes. So that's what we have currently. Um, we can make any recommendation or change that the commission seals, sees fit. All of our playgrounds have had the equipment replaced now, so we're all up to date. We should be pretty good on updating anything that's existing now once we finish up Coon Lake Beach. Yeah, Coon Lake Beach has it for me. Yeah. Yep. We but have the one in, John, in uh, Anderson, um, Whispering Oaks this summer. And then Kuma Beach left. So for the Coon Lake Beach playground equipment and skate park, are we still going to have the same amount in there? 
That's up to the commission. I think we, if you wanted to, we could leave that in there and look at it next year and see when it comes time to actually pick out what we want to put in there. Well, well then we'll have a full season of the softball, so we'll know what the traffic is like. Might know stuff. what they're looking for for that area, too. Right, okay. yeah. right. And we can probably pay a little closer attention to the skate park, too. You know, I mean, we just yeah. occasionally drive by, and if you don't see anybody, but but when you're not there, maybe people are using it. Right, so, depending on yeah. how close you are, you can hear them, too, when they're... We're not quite close enough. No. Oh. Yeah. But we, That's what I hear is the... Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. move around oh, a lot, but not necessarily on Laurel Road. We could just, you know, yeah. try to make a point of yeah. keeping a little closer watch on that. Nate, how, um, with the cost of inflation this last year, are these numbers still pretty accurate, or have they gone up substantially? I haven't received bids on a lot of this stuff yet, but I'm guessing it's all gone up. Everything, everything we've looked yeah. at has gone up. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at a plow truck. It went from 240000 to 320000 in oh. two years. Jeez. And that's across the board for everything. <sighs> it's a tough world we live in these days. <laughs> yeah. So another thing we, we kind of, Tim had mentioned at one of the council meetings, I've, uh, let me pull it up here real quick. Some other funding sources, once we do pick out what kind of projects we're looking at, These are grants that the city of or uh, city of East Dublin could could apply for through the DNR. Booster East was built with one of these grants. Um, these these are all different ones that we would probably qualify for. The two that kind of make the most sense are the local trail connections program and the park and trails legacy grant program. Um, they're they're all matching grants. This one's, they're, both, they're all competitive grants, but uh, whatever, whatever you use the money for has to stay as a park in perpetuity. So, and like out here, we have to have a sign always up in Booster East that says this was funded through DNR grant. Mm -hmm. But there's a possibility that if we find a project we like, we could get maybe up to half of it paid for in one of these grants. That's been brought up at the community center a couple times at meetings if we looked at that. The local trail connections, this is basically just for trails. Um, up to, I think it's up to $250,000. So here's a list of ones that were funded in the past. So there are 1,600 feet of trail. This one is uh, 420 feet of raised eight foot wide boardwalk. So that's kind of what we looked at for getting across some of them wetlands. A lot of these are, when you look at the project costs, that's multiple years of our budget to do one of them. Right, mm -hmm. right. But if you can get a grant, you can cut that in half. Mm -hmm. I added, this one was 0.3 miles, so a quarter mile, $630,000. Well, it says it's on a highway. Yeah, but it must be <laughs> extending the shoulder or something. But we do not qualify for any of the... Uh, Met Council money for the regional trails. The, the counties all administer that. The one within the, the anybody within the seven county metro area that has to be administered through this through the uh, counties, and it's only used for regional trails. Yeah. They do have a regional trail in East Bethel, but it hasn't. So they're not doing any development on it anytime soon. It actually runs basically along uh, Highway or uh, County Road 74, east to west from Lake George out to uh, Martin Lake, actually. There's another small chunk that goes through Lexington up kind of by the beach and over to Martin Lake as well. She did show that on the, when she was here. She had that shown on there. They might do a little piece of that, but when they do that, Coon Lake Park. Mm -hmm. Once you're outside of the metro area, then you can qualify for some other money that we don't we don't qualify for here. But the Coon Lake, they're still waiting to get that approved through Met Council. Right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, has, it has to be a regional a regional park, and it has to be a regional trail to qualify for that money. That's all money that comes from uh, lottery proceeds. Oh, interesting. There are some other ones on here too, but most of them are uh, for grant and aid trails, like snowmobile trails, and they have to be you have to charge um, trail trail fees for them. So you have to 
there's one for cross country ski trails, but you have to make sure that anybody using it buys the cross country ski, ski trail pass. Oh, and um, stuff like that. We do it for free. Yeah. So those are two we can look at that could maybe help offset some of these costs. So well, for the baseball and softball fields, can we look at the Twins Community Fund? They have some grants. There is another possibility for that, yes. For lighting, you mean? Lighting or even for our shade structures or whatever, maybe. Possibly. The shade structures we were looking at were more of like, um, not for the actual ball field, it would be for the spectators. So these are large, almost like a circus canopy that are freestanding, like a, it's like a soft topped pavilion. Okay. You set them on the, like on the berms out there. So for parents could sit underneath the shade or they could have a picnic table set up underneath there. And then usually you take that structure off in the winter time. We, when I worked with the city of Ham Lake, we had two of them that we put up there. If you've seen their fields down there, they've got a couple of pretty big sh shade structures. They make some smaller ones too that are more like artistic that are look like wind sails and stuff, but. Do we have someone that could do those grants for grading? Yeah, I, I can, I've done, That's I've neat. written some grants. Once he we pick it. out a project. <laughs> I know uh, Tony Hawk used to have a foundation that did um, grants too for skateboard parks at one time, but I, I can't remember that. what the um, parameters for that were. So those are some options to look going forward. So concession stand upgrades, any other, uh, have you guys heard anything else from anybody in the community that wants to see park additions? Bonnie still wants her sliding hill. <laughs> yeah, well, we looked at that, but there really isn't anywhere over there to build one, is there? We looked at that on our tour. We, I'm, I'm still not convinced there is a spot. <laughs> you could take you could take the skateboard park out because it's there's a nice asphalt pad there already, so you could kind of pull that. But you could pull that out and build a build a somewhat size sliding hill there. But then you have to decide: do you want a playground or do you want a sliding hill? Right. Right. Limited on land in that area. After that, it drops off into the swamp all around there. We want both. So is that? <laughs> That's how I feel too. Swamp I want it stuff. All. Protected? Is there anything you do? Can you, like, is there any opportunity to fill any of that in to get more usable? There land is ways to, to fill wetlands, but it's expensive. You have to create two wetlands for every two to one for everything you fill, well, or buy wetland credits. Hmm. And it's kind of a there's a lot of environmental stuff you have to hoops you have to jump through too. Probably not an option. It's all about the the clean dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The city owns a large oh. piece of property along um, Cedar? along Cedar and, and the lake itself. That's what I'm mm -hmm. talking about. But it's mainly in the floodplain, I think. Isn't there? Don't they? Doesn't the city own the own a, or used to own? Where's the piece they were gonna put in a? Uh, back in the day when they were looking at sewer. I thought there was something on the left as you're going down towards the Ham Lake line on sewer. Uh, there, I'm just gonna look it up real quick. So the city owns these green, green areas right now. And they also own most of this along here, all these different parcels. All these things that look like roads, these are actually road right-of-ways that are publicly owned too, from the city these stuff owns. Same with all these. This was all platted at one point. But if you pull up, uh, I don't know if I have the contours on this one. You're saying that those are wetlands though, for the most part? Swampy land? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty low. I mean, it's pretty much at lake level. It's kind of like a lot of it. Cooper's Lake, where you can't have anything sail or just kayak. And it's a shame because this is a really nice sandy beach area. Yeah, it, it is. is. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. But this is all uh, ash and wetland forest in here, I would say. 
And there's landing turtles in there. Well, well then that's well, a, another issue then. And that whole shoreline is nothing but boats lined up on In the summertime, this is, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well, which I think is what Anoka County is looking at, <coughs> trying to eliminate some of that. Good. They call that whiskey flats. Whiskey flats, yeah. yeah. It's a big party place. I call it Cedar Sand. Cedar Sand. I like oh. that better. Yeah. <laughs> you guys were going to build a resort. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a lot. Isn't there a lot for sale at Del Mar and Lincoln? How much do they want for the lot? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, it's been on, it's been on there for a long time, I think. Because, yeah, it's right by your house, isn't it? Well, down by Lincoln and... It's at the very Bird? end. It's at the very end, or maybe Bird behind um, uh, Mary Jensen. Mary Jensen. Yeah, that's a hundred by hundred lot. Is that enough for a snow hill? I don't know. How much would it cost though? I don't know. That'd be pretty small. Yeah, it's not real big. Probably not going because it's probably got some septic issues or something, right? Yeah. That's I could see that going there. with uh, Mary Jensen property eventually here, possibly. And the other one we looked at was this green shaded area, getting a park in this area. We don't have any public right. facilities anywhere in here. Um, there's going to be some higher use homes and things of that nature in the city utility area at some point. So that was kind of a, a priority from the past discussions from the park commission is looking at getting a more of a larger uh, Park in that area, not just a small neighborhood park, but something that was a little bit right, something more like a John Anderson or yeah, a booster a more scale. Because I know we had talked about um, talked to some people about pickleball, because you know that's very popular right now. Getting leagues and all that going. Yeah, that's really popular. Another area that's been talked to, oops, that's been talked about for a long time is uh, the expanding booster park. I know it's kind of a dream, but there's a lot of undeveloped property across the street. Yeah, I asked somebody about I, that, but they said a farmer owns it. Is that? It's owned by uh, it's owned by a family. He leases the leases it out for farming. Because I looked at it to ask if we could park there for a booster day, and I was told don't even bother. So he just leases it. He doesn't farm there himself. Correct. Yep. The same property owner owns uh, everything up along the highway too, around the uh, landfill site. The Superfund site? Oh, it's not Superfund anymore. I think it passed finally. Yeah. But it backs up to the Sandhill Crane nature area. Nice property, but it's, it's pretty expensive. But that's been on the city's radar since long before I started. This, this map shows uh, kind of a layout of what the future plans are. This blue line is the regional trail I was talking about that's on the Noka County's plan. So that is actually a, a regional trail plan, but when that's developed, it could be a long time. And the other one is just this little short piece right here. This barely touches the city as it, in the corner. Where's that one? That short one? Right along Lexington Avenue, right, oh, right okay. for the curbs. When you come to the T, yeah. you turn to go to the and beach. Then is and then is it where Carlos Avery is on the Yep, it follows side. along there. And then actually, if you, on the No County's regional trail plan, it goes all the way up to Martin Lake through uh, Carlos Avery. Another dream. <laughs> they've, they've worked on that portion a little bit. If you go down Lexington into Blaine, it comes up uh, to Bunker and Ham Lake. That's that same trail segment. And they do that trail, they develop that trail when they redo the highway. So as they make that into four lanes or reconstruct it, they're trying to add that trail section on oh, there. Oh, so that's that trail that's just off the side of the highway? Or Correct, side of the yeah. road. And they're not, still not looking at straightening out those curbs. I haven't, we haven't heard anything from them in a while. On, I, haven't, I haven't met with the county in a while on any plans in that area. Did that property sell mm. on Which that one? last curve? Before the, the um, maintenance building, sounded that like corner it. piece. Yes, yep. Sounded like it when that the lady was here from Anoka when Karen County. was here from Anoka County. The they missed out on it. They tried to buy it and they missed and it was sold. All right, so does anybody have any recommendations then for changes?
And I can add, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll put together a draft. I'll update all the, the uh, starting balances and what we kind of see as uh, coming in for revenues, especially in the uh, Parks Capital Improvement Plan. And then we'll bring that back to another meeting. And we can still make changes at that time, too, before it goes out to City Council for their changes and approval. So if anything pops up in the next month, maybe kind of put your feelers out and look, think about anything you want to see added on. The biggest things I hear still are trails. Um, I've had a contact from people looking for a park down here. I think we had a letter from a, a girl that, a young girl that sent in for looking for a park in this area a couple years ago. Um, and then just the biggest use that we have is Booster Park. One uh, weekend day there probably equals the rest of our parks for the entire year with the amount of visitors. So. Oh. The more that we upgrade everything, the more people are using it. Yeah, and we always get lots of good compliments. Yep. On, from people every every baseball tournament, every softball tournament I've ever been at, everybody, it's like, you guys have the best park. So mm. it's really good. Is this map on the website, or is it something uh, I can get a copy of? I don't know if this one's on there or not. I can check. Or if you could email me a copy of it or something. Yeah, that's yeah, that's possible. Absolutely. Nick, did we ever um, do that um, from last summer that over by John Anderson, you know, that we're gonna we we're gonna make that little connection? That's the that's the one we're paving that we're waiting for the paving cost. Oh, okay. We built that the, listed on here. Nope. So that was oh. under twenty twenty two. Okay. We should. Uh, well, I haven't got prices on the asphalt yet, so I'll we'll have to see how that comes in. I'm kind of nervous on what asphalt prices mm -hmm. look like this year, but. Oh, Is there an alternative to that? That. Well, right now it's a nice. You can walk on it. It's a. It's a. We we used uh, recycled concrete. But yeah. There's a nice trail in there. You can you can walk in there. Um, it's actually really nice back in there. Um, we still have to do the boardwalk connection. Across. There's, a, there's a little wetland here that connects to that neighborhood. We have a little bit of work to do in there yet. We're going to do this spring, hopefully, and at least get that paved up to that point. Did we pull out those old girls that were back there? I think they did. I'm not sure. I just think that they're kind of a hazard. Yeah. <laughs> we, you probably won't be able to start work very soon, right? It's going to be a really <laughs> compact <laughs> spring this year. We bottles, be. getting gravel roads shaped up, all the baseball fields ready to go. It's going to be, uh, it's awesome. It's going to turn a switch. We have to do all of our street sweeping. Get your rubber boots out. Yeah. We're hoping, usually we try and tackle a lot of these bigger, like, trail projects later in the summer after the after When it's drier. Less usually drier. Active. And our our, our uh, daily work, usually the parks, grass starts slowing down. We don't have to mow as much and, and free up some guys, so. Okay, well, I got to start here. I'll, I'll put that together for the next meeting. We don't need a recommendation for tonight. We okay. just a, kind of a working meeting for that part. And we should just contact you if we think of anything. Yeah, anything. Shoot me an email. We'll put it on there for discussion. And All right, and then, without further ado, Mr. Miller, if you would like to give us our city council report. I'm going to try something to do a little different um, than a normal council update, basically. I'm going to talk a little bit about how this group, as a collective, is here to enhance the city's parks and trail systems. I believe it's very important for us to share our individual visions <clears throat> and the work we're doing to help make these dreams a reality. By doing so, I think we can better understand each other's perspectives, foster a sense of unity, and ensure our collective efforts align with our goals. With that said, I'm going to kindly request that each Parks Commission member just take some time to summarize their personal vision for the city's park system, along with your vision, share any specific actions, initiatives that you've undertaken or thought of to help bring these ideas to life. Um, I think this will provide valuable insights into range of ideas and efforts that are shaping our parks and trails right now in the city. 
once you've got that done, if you could, you can call me or email me because I, I want to know what your visions are and what you think about what we should do. Um, I'd like to be able to review them with you, compile them, and I think this is going to strengthen our collaboration but also give us an, an opportunity to celebrate the great work each member has been contributing to our community. As we work together on our comprehensive parks and trails plan, which you guys were talking about this evening, um, I want to make sure that we understand, at least I understand, that what our visions and goals are are going to be shaped by these fees that we bring in. And there was a lot of discussion tonight, and it, it's tough to put a number on that. But it's also tough to put a number on that when we're not sure exactly what we want to accomplish this year and what we want to see done and what we want to see built into the future. And I think that's important that we, we're all on the same page for that. And I want to be on the same page as you. So by able to talk to you about what we want to do, what our visions are, we can set some goals here and allow ourselves to plan stuff out with realistic you know, futures that we're going to see for the city. Um, when these, when we set goals, I'd like to be able to set big goals, but I have to keep realistic here. I want to be able to do things that are aggressive yet attainable. Um, the biggest impact and the easiest to accomplish, and, and then let's work from there. I mean, I want to make sure that at least the goals that we are considering are for the needs throughout the city and, and not just focus on one central area or one park in general. Uh, I'm going to do something different tonight. I'm going to give you my notes that I prepared this evening. I have different goals on them that I've gone through. And keep in mind, these are notes, these are suggestions, these are not directives. These are ideas. These are some of the things that I'm looking into the future about. And I want you to be able to say yay, no, not attainable, we can do that, and the different ideas in, in how to accomplish that. Um, in closing tonight, I have no doubt your expertise and passion for our community's parks and recreation program will help us create effective proposals for the goals we want to focus on for 223, 224, and beyond. Uh, we want to be able to unlock the resources here to accomplish these goals. I would like this parks team to work together on specific requests, and I'd like them to continue like they are now working as a team. I want to thank you for all your unwavering dedication to enhance our parks, our trails, the green spaces in the city, and I'm excited to see all the progress that once we put ourselves and align ourselves together with goals, objectives, and resources, what kind of a difference we can make and really make. So with that, <clears throat> I'm going to give you one of these before I go. I want you guys to understand that these are my notes. These are <coughs> my suggestions. These are things I was thinking about. Are they attainable? I don't know. This is the group that's going to let me know that and what we need to do. So I thank you for that, and I'm going to drop this off for you. Can I have a copy, Tim? I'll email Bill and uh, the other Tim one, too. They can take a look at it. <clears throat> but there is a book up here that I've read. And I'm sure you guys have seen it. It's got a lot of the trails, comprehensive plan, and it's very good. Thank you. I worked on that. Except we're not <laughs> making a lot of big progress on it. This has got some great stuff in it. I mean, it's, it opened my eyes when I read it, and it opened a lot of visions that back in 2007, I think they updated this in 2017. Um, whenever we did the comprehensive plan again. We updated the, kind of our map. We didn't actually update the actual book. That was that was done by an outside firm that Glen Estrella did that. There's some excellent stuff in here, and I suggest yeah. taking a look at it when you can, because the land that was envisioned to make changes on and, and do the different parks and trails uh, is still there. 
You just have to figure out how to do it. Come up with a common goal, work together, and somehow unleash the resources that will be coming in from the developments to make sure that we take care of the residents and, and get these trails and stuff done out there. Because that would be huge for this city. Thank you. I think the biggest drawback to that has been funding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is, which is for everything. Right, we lost a whole bunch of funding for many years, which yeah. slowed us down, so. All right, does anybody have anything else to add? Nope. All right. No updates for me, Hope, pray for no more snow. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> you should get a little lottery going on when the last snow bank is gonna disappear. <laughs> it's gonna be a while, I think. Could raise some money for the parks. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do that. <laughs> All right. Anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. There we go. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion made motion. and passed. <laughs>